So yeah, hi, hello everyone. So today we are going to see the questions of starters 153 of Code Chef contest. So let's move on to the contest. So this is the first problem. The name of the problem is butterfly. So in your garden, there are exactly R red butterflies, D green butterflies, and B blue butterflies. And there are also exactly R red flowers, D green flowers, and B blue flowers. You need to determine whether it is possible for every butterfly to feed on exactly one flower, such that no two butterflies feed on the same flower, and each butterfly feeds on a flower whose color is different from its own color. For example, a red butterfly can only feed on green and blue flowers and not the red flowers. So you are given these values of R, D, and B, and you need to say that whether it is possible that no two butterfly feeds on the same flower and every butterfly feeds on the flower that is having a color different from its own color. So let's understand the question here. So the question says that So you have R, red butterflies, G, green butterflies, and B, blue butterflies. And same, you have the same quantity of flowers as well. Now what you want is that red butterflies should feed on only green and blue butterflies. Uh, red butterflies should feed on only green and blue flowers. Green butterflies should feed on only red and blue flowers. And Blue butterflies should feed on only green and red flowers. So the question says that whether it is, is it possible or not. So you have exactly R red butterflies, G green butterflies, B blue butterflies, and R red flowers, G green flowers, and B blue. Is the question statement clear to everyone? Is the question statement clear to everyone? Anyone having doubt in the question? No, right? Okay. Then how we can actually solve this? See, if I tell you that, let's suppose I have four red butterflies, two green butterflies, and one blue butterfly. If I say you something like this, okay. So what you have, you have four red flowers, two green flowers, and one blue flower. Isn't it? Now tell me, you know that red butterflies can feed only on green flowers and blue flowers. So is it possible for red butterflies to, for all the red butterflies to get some flower? Is it possible? Is it possible for all the red butterflies to get some flowers? No, right? It is not possible. Why? Because the total number of flowers that are not red is actually 2 plus 1, which is equal to 3 and the total number of red butterflies that I have is four. So it is never possible for all the red butterflies to feed on the green and blue flowers. So we can say that, okay, in this case, the answer will be no. So can I say that R must be lesser than equals to G plus B? This condition should always hold. Can I say this? Can I say this, that R lesser than G plus B condition should always hold? Similarly, I can say that G must be lesser than equal to R plus B and B must be lesser than equals to G plus R. These all three conditions should be true. Then only my, I will say that, okay, the answer is that, okay, till now I have not, I will see that after this, what I will do. But if any of this condition is false, so I can say that my answer is no. Do you all agree with me till now? Till now? If any of these condition is false, then I will definitely say that my answer is no. Anyone having doubt till now? No? Okay. Now, my claim is that if all of these are, or if all these three equations are simultaneously true, then my answer will always be yes. And let me tell you how. So, I know that R is lesser than equals to G plus B. B is lesser than equals to G plus R. 
and g is lesser than equals to p plus r. From this, can I say that if r plus b plus g is equal to n, then r is lesser than equals to n by 2, p is lesser than equals to n by 2, and g is lesser than equals to n by 2. Can I say this? This is because r is lesser than equals to g plus b. So if I just add r in left and right, so it will become 2r is lesser than equals to b plus g plus r. This means 2r is lesser than equals to n. This implies r is lesser than equals to n by 2. Simultaneously, uh, similarly, b is lesser than equals to n by 2 and g is lesser than equals to n by 2. Do you all agree that this condition will always be true? Now, what I say is, now since both all are lesser than equals to n by 2, so if I have, if I just write R, G and B in this order, some R's, some G's and some B's. So what I can always do is, if I am standing over here, so I know that my uh, N by 2 is equal to, in this case, my N by 2 is equal to 3, right? So what I can do is, if I am standing over here, I can pair this index I with value I plus N by 2. That is pair I with I plus N by 2. And why I say that I and uh, now do you all agree that the color at index I and color at index I plus N by 2 will be different? Do you all agree with me in this? That color at index I and color at index I plus N by 2 will surely be different because any color has maximum occurrence of N by 2. Since any color have maximum occurrence of n by 2, so I can definitely say that the color that is present at index i and the color that is present at index i plus n by 2 will surely be different. Do you all agree? So what I can do is I will pair every index i with index i plus n by 2. Every index i with index i plus n by 2. And this way I can always populate my answer. Now this is when the value of n is even. We will see the value of n as odd as well. But till now is this point clear? That I can always pair index i with index i plus n by 2. And I will say that, okay, this butterfly will feed on green color flower. And this green butterfly will feed on red color. Can I say this? Do you all agree with me till now? Yes. If this is true, what if the value of n is odd? If the value of n is odd, let's suppose I took the value of n as 7. So let's suppose I have this R, R, G, G, B, B, B. So what I can do is I can still, I can still pair I with I plus N by 2. I can still pair I with I plus N by 2. Let's see what happens when we do this. So this will get paired with this. This will get paired with this. And this will get paired with this. So just observe, we are left out with one value, right? This does not get paired with anyone. Now you can see that we can pair this particular last index always with 0, 0 plus n by 2. Because since I know that I the maximum value any color flower will have is lesser than equals to n by 2. So I can definitely say that the last index color will be different to the color of 0 and 0 plus n by 2. I can definitely say that. So I can always pair the last index with the first pair that I took and my answer will always be yes. So this is how actually we can solve this question that if this condition is true, if this condition is true, then always the answer will be yes. And this is how we can prove this. And if you take some examples from that examples as well, you can prove that. But this is how mathematically you can this is how you will actually form the pairs. Do you all get this? Anyone having doubt in this? Any doubt, guys? Should I move on to the code? No? Great. So this is actually the code to this question. So what I did is, I took the inputs of R, G and B, 
then if r is greater than b plus g or b is greater than g plus r or g is greater than r, r plus b if any of this condition is true then my answer will be no and if all these conditions are false then i know that my answer will be yes so i printed yes so this is the code to this question okay anyone having doubt in this should i move on to the next question no great so this is the next question the name of the question is another game so alice and bob have decided to play yet another game alice and alice will give bob a non negative integer k and a permutation p of length n bob's goal is to short the permutation p in ascending order to achieve this bob can perform the following operation however many number of times he can choose two indices i and j such that pi plus pj is lesser than equals to some value k and he can swap those values pi and pj now alice wants the game to be as challenging as possible for bob so she asks you to find the minimum value of k for which it is possible for bob to short the permutation p a permutation of length n is an array of length n that contains every integer from 1 to n in some shorted order so what actually the question is the question is that you are given a permutation of numbers 1 to n so what do we mean by permutation of numbers so if i am having a permutation of length n this means that it contains all the numbers from 1 to n exactly once so if let's suppose i am talking of permutation of 3 so it will contain all the numbers 1, 2, 3 exactly once okay now what is given to you is you are given an array of permutation of these numbers let's suppose i am given 2 3 1 and i want to short this array now while shorting i have a condition if i am swapping any two numbers if let's suppose this is pi and this is pj then this pi plus pj should be lesser than equals to k k is some number that i have already decided and this pi plus pj should be lesser than equals to k now the question is that find the minimum value of k for which you can short the array is the question clear you need to find a minimum value of k for which you yet you can short the array is the question clear yes okay how we can do so the trick over here was like uh it's it's a very common question like if you have two numbers let's suppose 2 3 if you have this permutation okay and you know that this is not shorted right so if you see one thing if i want to like do you all agree that okay 2 is not in its correct position 3 is not in its correct position 1 is not in its correct position i know it. do you all agree with me that if any number is not in its correct position then it will definitely be swapped do you all agree with me in this that i will change the position of that number right if it is not in its correct position i will definitely change the position of that number do you all agree with me in that yes now if there are two numbers pi and pj okay and i know that okay this pi is not in its correct position so i will add something to this such that the value becomes lesser than equals to k and then i will be able to swap this pi right do you all agree that i will add something the next number that i am going to swap the number that i am going to swap p1 pi with i will add that and that value should be lesser than equals to k and then i will be able to change the position of pi if this is the case can anyone say me the minimum number that i can add over here can anyone say me the minimum number that i can add over here? minimum of array what is the minimum of array nikunj if you have n numbers such that 1 to n comes exactly once what is the minimum of array one right so my claim is that the answer will i will prove this but my claim is that answer is nothing but the maximum number that 
is not in its correct position. The maximum number that is not in its correct position plus. This will actually what my answer will be. And let me prove you why. If I let's suppose tell you that you have an array. 1, 3, 2. And I know that I, am, I need to swap these 3 and 2 to make this permutation short. Now, if I directly swap these 2 and 3. If I directly swap these 2 and 3, what will happen? See. My 2 plus 3. Should be lesser than equals to k. So do you all agree? In that case, the minimum value of k that I will get. Minimum value of k that I will get will be equals to 5. Do you all agree with me? That if I directly swap this 2 and 3. So this condition should be satisfied that 2 plus 3 should be lesser than equals to k. In that case, the minimum value of k that I will get is, than, is equal to 5. But let me do like this. If I just do like this. Swap this 3 and 1. So this 3 will come over here, 1 will come over here, 2 will come over here. And 3 plus 1 should be lesser than equals to k. Since I swap these two numbers 3 and 1. Now I swap this 1 and 2. So from this I swap 1 and 2. So 3, 2, 1. And I got that okay 2 plus 1 should be lesser than equals to k. And now I swap this 1 and 3 again. And now you will see that with the help of this 1, I was able to swap these two numbers. With the help of this one, I was able to swap these two numbers. And in this case, you can see the value of k, the minimum value of k is 4. So the thing is, by the use of one, you can swap any two numbers. It does not matter that whether those numbers are one or not. By With the help of one, you can swap any two numbers. So the answer will be the maximum number that is not in its correct position plus one. No, why, why you are taking maxi as star of max element? I told that the maximum number that is not in its correct position. If you have, if you have the permutation something like this. If I let's suppose tell you that you have the permutation something like this. 1, 3, 2, 4. In this case, your maxi turns out to be 4. But the maximum number that is not in its correct position is 3. So in this case, your answer will not be 4 plus 1. Your answer will be 3 plus 1. Why plus 1? Y plus 1, Pankaj, if you are swapping two numbers, so this is the maximum number that is not in its correct position. So you will add something to it. That should be lesser than equals to K, right? If you are swap, swapping two numbers, PI and PJ, then PI plus PJ should be lesser than equals to K. So what the minimum you can add? The minimum you can add is 1, right? You will swap these two numbers, 3 and 1, and as I demonstrated. So 3 plus 1 should be lesser than equals to K, now. So the maximum number that was not in its correct position was 3. And you will add 1 to it because with 3, if you are swapping 3, there is one more number that is getting swapped. And if there are two numbers PI and PJ that is getting swapped, then K must be greater than or equal to PI plus PJ. So that's why plus 1. Do you get this now? Is it clear to everyone? Yes? Great. So let's see the code. The code is pretty much simple. So what you have to do is, This did not strike at first glance. Not a problem. Wait, I will share a similar problem. Wait a minute. Let me go through this code. So the code is, first of all, I took the number of numbers, initialized my answer to 0, and just took the inputs from starting from 1, lesser than equals to n, i plus plus. Took the input, and if x is not equal to i, okay, if x is not equal to i, in that case, I know that this x is not in its correct position. So I am just taking answer as equals to max of answer comma x. So if after this, my answer is zero, this means that every number was in its correct position. So in that case, I am printing zero. Else I am printing the maximum number that was not in its correct position plus one. Do you all get the code? Yes. So there is actually a pretty much similar problem in actually CP31 sheet in 1100 rated problem. Let me see if I can get this right now. Uh, I got this approach uh, within like minutes, like within not minutes as well. I got this within seconds because there is a very similar question over here as well. I actually don't remember the question, but there is a very similar question in this sheet. 
where you have to do the same thing. I actually don't remember the question. Best collecting game. Okay, I, I will see this at the end of discussion. There is a similar question. I will share that question with you all, which exactly matches what uh, this question is. This is a very famous question. Like if you want to swap, you will, you are swapping with the help of some lower value and it's always possible to do that. So yes, that is actually what the approach, the major thing behind this question was. So the minimum value that you can swap with this is actually one. So this is how the solution proceeds. Do you all get the solution? Should I proceed to the next question? Is the question clear? Yes. Great. So this is the next question. The name of the question is colorful tree. It's an easy version. So you are given a tree containing n vertices and n minus one undirected edges. So you have to color each vertex of the tree, either red, blue, or green. So each vertex must receive exactly one color and there should also be at least one vertex having each color in the end. So for vertex u, the score is defined as sum of distances from u to the closest vertex of the other two colors. More clearly, if let's suppose your vertex u is of red color, then d1 is the minimum distance from u to a green vertex and d2 is the minimum distance from u to the blue vertex, then the score for this vertex u is nothing but d1 plus d2. So the question is that uh, you have to calculate the final beauty of the tree is actually the sum of score of all the vertices and you have to minimize this beauty. So the question is that what is the minimum beauty of this tree? So let me make you all understand the question diagrammatically. So what is given is you are given it. So you are given a tree. And they have told you that if let's suppose you color any vertex as red. If you color a vertex as red. And let's suppose you color this vertex as red. Okay. If you do so. If you color this vertex as green. And this vert color, vertex as green. And let's suppose you color this vertex as And this vertex as This vertex as This vertex as red. And this vertex as green. Okay. So what they have told you. That if let's suppose this is a vertex. This is a vertex C. Okay. So score of U is equal to, since this is of red color, since this is of red color, so you need to look that from this vertex, what is the minimum distance of a green colored vertex? So can anyone say me that for this particular vertex, what is the minimum distance of a green colored vertex? Can you guys tell me? One, right? The minimum distance of a green colored vertex is one. Similarly, for this vertex, the minimum distance of blue colored vertex. One, right? So the score of this vertex becomes equal to. Similarly, can if, if this is, let's suppose, vertex U. Can anyone say me? Since this is of green color, so I will check color red and blue. For this vertex, the minimum distance of a red colored vertex. Can anyone say me? It's one, right? And similarly, for this vertex, the minimum distance of a blue colored vertex, it is again one. So the score of this vertex is also two. The score of this vertex is also two. Now the question is that you have to sum up the scores of all the vertices and tell that what is the minimum score that you can produce. If you are coloring the vertex by this, what is the minimum score that you can produce? Is the problem statement clear? Do anyone have doubt in the problem statement? No, right? Okay. How we can do this? Now tell me what, in the, what is the best case scenario that you can have? What is the best case scenario that you can have? If I tell you that you have some vertex that is colored red, 
and what you want to do is from this vertex you want to add the distances of vertex that is color green and blue the minimum distances right so if let's suppose this has two nodes okay this this node has two nodes so do you all agree that if i what is the best case scenario the best case scenario is when i have this vertex as green and this vertex as blue in this case, for this particular vertex, the score will be 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. Do you all agree that for this particular vertex, this is the best case scenario? Because if I am, if this is a red vertex and I am adding the distance of a green colored vertex, so the distance will be minimum 1. Similarly, if this is a red colored vertex and I am, I am adding the distance of a vertex that is colored blue, so the distance will be minimum 1. So the best case scenario can be that I get the score as 2. Do you all agree with me? What? Then what is the best case scenario? I... Agree. Now the thing is that I can always produce the best case scenario except in certain scenarios and let me tell you how. Let's suppose I take the above example only. If you let's suppose see how I have colored the above tree. See, I colored this as red. Then I know that the adjacent vertices of this should have green and blue to get the best case scenario. So what I did is I colored the adjacent as green and blue. Similarly for this blue, the adjacent should be green and red. So see the red was already there. I colored one of them with green. Similarly for this particular blue. Okay, let's not talk of this particular blue. Let's talk of this particular blue. So again to its adjacent, we should always have red and green to get the best case scenario. And you can see to its adjacent, we have red and green. So this is the best case scenario that I am able to produce. Just observe one thing, the nodes for which I was not able to produce the best case scenario. The nodes were this, this node, this node, this node, and this. Do you guys agree that for this node, I was not able to produce the best case scenario? What is the best case scenario? The best case scenario is that if, if, if a node is colored red, then I should have two adjacent nodes colored green and blue. In this case, the score of this vertex becomes two. This is actually what the best case scenario is. But tell me one thing that if there is a node and there is only one adjacent node to it, how can we get the best case scenario for this particular node? Yes, if these nodes have only one edge, then how come we can get the best case scenario for this? But just observe one thing for these nodes. The best case scenario will be that one distance is one and the other distance is two. It should not be greater than two. And it is always possible for me to achieve that. Just observe. It's always possible for me to get for this particular node. It is red. So I just kept blue as distance one and green as distance two. And this is always possible. If I color the tree uh, in the best case scenario, then for all the nodes that are having only one edge, I will always, always get this condition that four of those particular nodes is three. This is how actually we can solve this question. So what we can do is we can just maintain a degree of every node. So what do we actually mean by degree? What do we actually mean by degree? Do you all know what do we mean by degree of a node? If let's suppose this is a tree, can anyone say me that what is the degree of this particular node? The degree of this particular node is 2, right? It is a part of two edges. Similarly, what is the degree of this particular node? It is 3. It is part of three edges. 1, 2, and 3. What is the degree of this particular node? 1, right? Because it is part of only 1. So, what we can do is we can calculate degree of every node. And if degree of any node is greater than equals to 2. Then for this particular node, the answer will be added by 2. Else, answer will be added by 3. And that's, that's how you can solve this question. Do you all get the logic? Yes? Great. So let me jump onto the code code is that so first of all i took this n as input that is the number of nodes 
then uh, I constructed this degree vector of size n, all initialized to 0. So d of i will basically tell me the degree of the ith. So the, I took the input of edges. So there are n minus 1 edges in total. So I took the input of edges. I took input of a and b. And since I am considering zero-based indexing, I simply did a minus minus and b minus because they have given you a and b in one-based indexing format. Then what I did is I increased the degree of a and degree of b. This I increased. Then I initialized my answer to zero, just went over all the nodes. If degree of any node is one, then in that case, I am incrementing answer by three, else I am incrementing answer by two. And again, I am predicting the answer. Is the code and the logic clear? Is the code and logic clear? Yes, great. So let's move on to the next question. Yeah, another game is already discussed. Give me a minute. The test cases were not weak. The test cases were too strong. I don't know what actually was happening in this question, but you can see my submissions as well. See, I'm getting TLE in this. This solution actually passed for me. I submitted 21 times. I don't know why it's giving TLE. <laughs> they should cancel this contest, actually. I don't know what they have done in this question. See, this is this was actually the question. It is it gave me correct answer. Okay, and I am now copying the same code. Let me see this. If I am copying the same code, I am just pasting the same code which I submitted and for which I got the correct answer. It's giving TLE now. I I don't know what they have done, but th this is the intended solution. I will discuss this only. And it gave me correct answer in the contest. Yeah, yes, you can unmute. Yes, uh, am I audible? Yes. So in this problem, first of all, I did uh, the same approach like you did. Like I found the unique set pairs. So jar pairs. So after that, uh, after that, I stored and after, for uh, 40 minutes, it gave TLE. I don't know why. For uh, after that, I used some vector and uh, removed all the include bits C++ this, and this all header files. Has a problem. But let me discuss the solution. Actually, it's good if you solve the problem. It does not matter whether it gets submitted or not. But mm -hmm. let's solve the problem. It was strange. Yeah. So let's solve the problem. So let's not get into this, whether it gets submitted or not, because it has some problem. Uh, the test cases have some problem over there. I don't know why it is giving TLE. I will discuss the time complexity of this code as well. And you will, you all will get to know that, yeah, it is well within the time complexity. So it should pass, but I don't know why, why it is not passing. And it passed in the contest, so I don't know. Okay, so let's discuss the problem. So the name of the problem is Zometry. So let's go through the problem statement. You are given an array A containing n non-negative integers. You have to count the number of ordered quadruples i, j, k, l such that all i, j, k, l are within 1 and n. The values i, j, k, l are pairwise distinct. That is, these indices should be different. Okay. I, it does not, uh, i and j should not be equal. j and k should not be equal. The pairwise distinct means that is i, j, k, l should be different. And it is possible to form a rectangle ABCD with side lengths as AI ZOR AJ, AJ ZOR AK, AK ZOR AL, and AL ZOR AI. So if you have chosen two, three, four integers IJ, KL, and their values are AI, AJ, AK, AL, then you should be able to form the rectangle like this. Okay. And you need to find the ordered, ordered quadruples. Like let's suppose you have chosen, indi chosen indices one, two, three, four. So if this is also a valid and uh, valid 
pair and uh, valid formation. And if this is also a valid formation, though they contain the same set of indices, but they should be counted differently. This is what we mean by ordered code reverse. Is the question clear to everyone? Whatever you, what you're doing is you're choosing just four indices forming, re forming rectangles by doing the ZOR of the adjacent elements. And then it should be like the rectangle should be formed. So the question is that you are basically given this rectangle. You are choosing four indices, i, j, k, and l. So this side of the rectangle is nothing but a, i, z, or a, j. This side of the rectangle is a, j, z, or a, k. This side of the rectangle is a, k, z, or a, l. And this side of the rectangle is a, l, z, or. So the question is that you should be able to form rectangle. Okay. So if you are able to form rectangle, the thing simply means is that a, i, z, or a, j should be equal to a, k, z, or a, l. Because what we know, what is the property of rectangle? That adjacent sides are same, right? And AL or AI should be equal to AJ or AK. This condition should be true, right? So they want you that how many total quadruples you can. Is the problem statement clear? For you? Yes, great. So how we can actually do this? Let's suppose this is the end. And you have chosen three indices. Let's suppose you have four indices. You have chosen A1, A2, A3, A4. You have chosen these four values. So what you basically want, if you're forming a rectangle, let's suppose I tell you that A1 ZOR A is equal to A3 ZOR A1. If I say this, if I say this to you. So what I actually want, what I actually want, Let's not discuss like this. If these are the four ordered quadruples that I have chosen, so do, do you all agree that A1 ZOR A2 and A3 ZOR A4 should be same? A1 ZOR A2 should be equal to A3 ZOR A4. Do you all agree with me over here? Yes. Similarly, can I say that A2 ZOR A3 should be equal to A1 ZOR A4. A1 ZOR A4 should be equal to A2 ZOR A4. Do you all agree with me till now? Do anyone have doubt till now? Anyone is having doubt till now? Can you explain this? I have done the same thing what they have told. What they have told. If you have this four quadruples, so what will be the sides of the rectangle? The side of the rectangle will be A1, ZOR, A2, the first side. Second side will be A2, ZOR, A3. Third side will be A3, ZOR, A4. And fourth side will be A4, ZOR, A1. Or A1, ZOR, A4, basically. Isn't it? Now, since the sides of the adjacent, uh, opposite sides of the rectangles are equal, so I can say that A1, ZOR, A2 should be equal to A3, ZOR, A4. And A1, ZOR, A4 should be equal to a2 or A3. Do you all agree till now? Do you all agree till now? Yes. So what I thought during the conference, let me discuss that. What I thought was that, okay, there is this pair A2, A3 and A1, A4. Let's suppose I tell you that A2, ZOR, A3. I want this now. A2, ZOR, A3 should be equal to A1, ZOR, A4. I want this, right? Let's suppose I tell you that I form this pair A2, ZOR, A3 is equal to A1, ZOR, A4. Okay. I got, I got two pairs, two pairwise distinct pairs, such that A2, ZOR, A3 is equal to A1, ZOR, A4. Now, what I tell is, if this is true, 
then this will always be true that a1 zor a2 is equal to a3 zor a4. This will always be true. How can I say this? See. So what I say is, this will always be true. By property, yes, by property, but we need to write some lines because, see. Just a minute. So if you have this thing, what you do is in the left and right hand side, just ZOR with A2 and A3 or A1 and A3. So you have A2 ZOR A3, which is equal to A1 ZOR A1. Now what I tell is that ZOR with A1 ZOR, ZOR with A1 ZOR, you want over here A2. So A3, A1 Zor A2, and Zor over here with, well, let's keep this as A3, A1 Zor A3 and Zor over here as well with A1 Zor A3. You can always do this, right? If these two are same and you are Zor, uh, doing Zor with the same number in the left-hand side and right-hand side, they will be same. Now just see what left-hand side becomes. Left-hand side becomes A1 Zor A2 and right-hand side becomes a3 Zor A2. So if these two are true, that is Zor of these two numbers is equal to the Zor of these two numbers, then this will also be true that the Zor of these two numbers is equal to Zor of these two numbers. Zor of these two numbers will be equal to Zor of these two numbers. Do you all agree with me till now? Anyone having doubt till now? No, great. So what I did was that, okay, I found that what all pairs are giving me a Zor value X. Let's suppose A1 Zor A2 gave me X. A3 Zor A4 give me X. A6 Zor A5, let's suppose, give me X. Something like this. I saw that, okay, what all pairs are giving me X. First of all, I counted the count of those pairs. So counted pairs giving me some Zor value X. Now tell me, is it possible that two pairs are giving me the Zor value same and they contain the common index? Is it possible? The answer is no. Why? Because if let's suppose A1 Zor A2 is equal to A3 Zor A4. And let's suppose they contain the common index. They contain the common index. In that case, I can definitely say that A1 will become equal to A4. And in this case, the numbers in the array will not be pairwise distinct. But they have told you, they have told you that in this version, all the elements of A are pairwise distinct. So we can say that if two pairs are giving me the same Zor value, then there will be no common indices between those pairs. Is this thing clear? Is this thing clear? Right? So what I can do is, if I have, let's suppose a pair A1 Zor A2, which is giving me some Zor value X and A3 and A4 giving me the Zor value X. So let me tell you that how we can actually form the pairs. We can write A1, A2 over here. A3, A4 over here. This will be this will be a valid pair. This will be a valid quadruple, right? Now, this will also be a valid quadruple. Do you all agree? Do you all agree that this will also be a valid quadruple? Tell me. What I did was I simply swapped these two numbers. Yes. Similarly, I can swap these two numbers as well. Do you all agree? I can swap these two numbers as well. And considering this as a pair, since we considered this as a pair. So this pair we kept in inside at first of all. We can also write like this as well. Na? A3, A4, A1, A2. This is also a valid combination, right? So the answer will be, we can swap these two numbers. So it will be two factorial multiplied by, we can swap the outside two numbers, two factorial. And we can main, go, we can just put this inside pair in outside. So two factorial for that. So the total combination will be eight. 
So if I tell you that with a certain Zor value X, I have N number of pairs. So what I will do is from this N number of pairs, I will choose any two pairs. And from every pair, I will get my answer. Every so I will simply do NC2 multiplied by this N2 N minus one by two. This is actually what my solution will be. So if I simply jump onto the code, the code is pretty much simple. So what I have done is, first of all, I took inputs of n and constructed a vector of size n, and then constructed an unordered map of int comma ll. So this int is actually basically the ZOR value, and this ll is how many times this ZOR value is coming. Okay, I took this in map n b. Now you may question me that why you are using unordered map though its worst case complexity is big of n. So this was because during the contest I was using map and I got TLE. So to just try, I used unordered map and it passed. So that's why I have unordered map written over here. Okay. Then I went over all the pairs. I went over all the pairs and I did MP of V of I is V of J plus plus. So for this particular ZOR value, I simply incremented my frequency of a particular ZOR value. Then I initialized my answer to zero, just went over all the particular ZOR values. So temp basically stores how many times this particular ZOR value has come. And I am just choosing two pairs from this frequency temp. So in how many ways can we choose two pairs? So basically NC2, so temp C2. What is temp C2? It is basically temp multiplied by temp minus one by two. And I added that to my answer. And I know that for every pair, I will get eight possible solutions, right? So at the end, I am just printing answer to three, and that's how I have coded it out. Can I ask a doubt in implementation? Yes, you can. Like I did the same thing you did using unordered map. It gave TLE, then I used vector and uh, ran a loop up to 2E6. Uh, still it got TLE. Uh, see, uh, I, I can't answer this question actually why it is giving clearly. I think they have something, they have some problem with their test cases. I don't know because now see this, this solution passed in the contest. I show you all the proof. I already showed you all the proof. And now when I am submitting it, it is giving me clear. So what to do now? Yes, I did the same thing, but it uh, got failed. Yes. But then I did the I max element uh, into two loop. It yeah, got I, accepted. I understand. There were my friends as well for whom they wrote exactly the same code and they were give it, getting TLE. And now I am getting the TLE in the question that actually gave me AC in the context. So now what I can say, you can see my submissions as well. I have 21 submissions. I have so many submissions. But I have a code that is giving AC for uh, in every time. Like you can do two into max loop. Okay, but this should also give AC as well. No? What's the problem in this? This code does not have a problem. What's the time complexity in this case? If I just simply change this to map, okay. What will be the time complexity in the voice case? You are doing n square, n square over here, and just yes, the yes. implementing the frequency, right? So what's the issue in yes. this? Yes, I did the same thing first. I could have got under 200 rank. I did the same thing, but it got TLE. So I don't know what's the problem with this question, but this is the intended solution, right? You should be good to go if you have done this solution. This means that you have understood the con uh, solved question and you have solved it. Actually. So even after this, if you are getting clearly, that's not an issue. It's it's problem with the test cases. The test cases are weak, I guess. I don't know they are weak or strong or so much strong that they are not passing. I don't know, but this is what it is. So that's all. Uh, I was going to share for the second question. I was going to share a similar question. Let me see. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Give me a minute. I saw a very similar question.
Yes, this was a very similar question. So if you guys can see uh, CP31, uh, I am just sharing a very similar problem to the second problem of today. Uh, so if you just see this particular question, the 24th question from CP31 sheet under the 1100 rating range. So this is a very similar question. Like you may say that the concept is actually all the exactly the same. Kindly share the screen. Are you guys not able to see my screen? So let me share the problem straight. This is actually, this is actually what the problem is. So you can see this problem. It's only, uh, it's, uh, involves a bit of bit manipulation, but the concept is exactly. The same. You can try this problem as well. And then it's exactly similar to this. Okay. Any other doubt? So that's all for today. Thanks for joining.